For more on the situation in Japan, I'm joined from Montreal now by Gordon Edwards. He is the president of the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility. Mr. Edwards, thank you for being with us tonight. Can you begin Glad by to be giving here, us Marcia. Can you begin by giving us your assessment of the situation right now? Well, it's always difficult to know exactly what's going on. The Japanese don't understand exactly what the smoke is, but the smoke is coming from the vicinity of the spent fuel pool in uh, unit number three. Uh, the trouble with these spent fuel pools is that they contain years and years worth of irradiated nuclear fuel, which contains all those radioactive poisons that are in the core of the reactor, but they have no containment, so they're open to the atmosphere. Consequently, anything that happens in terms of fire or releases goes straight into the atmosphere, and one suspects that every time it happens, the radioactivity levels in the smoke are probably as high or higher than previously as the fuel gets more and more damaged. Oh, so how large should the evacuation zone be in your view? It's what, 20 kilometers right now? Doesn't seem like enough. No, it doesn't seem like enough. Now, mind you, we're talking about a huge logistic problem in terms of people, but nevertheless, the evacuation zone, in my opinion, should be much higher. Now that they're detecting these very high levels, uh, 29 times the maximum permissible level in the spinach, uh, that's way high. And uh, when they detect that kind of level on the leafy vegetables, that's going to be elsewhere as well. That's going to be on the clothing. That's going to be on the skins and the hair. Um, so it's really important to get people away from there, in my view. Also, the Japanese are not being forthright about all of the other radioactive materials which are being given off. Granted, iodine is the most immediate threat, but there's tellurium, there's ruthenium, there's strontium, and there's also the long-lived products like plutonium and curium and americium. These materials are not so immediately dangerous as iodine, but they get into the body and they stay there. So now's the time to do prevention. Do you sense that there is a lot the government isn't telling the people of Japan, isn't telling the world? Yes, I do. And I, I think that uh, one can understand that TEPCO, uh, the nuclear company, uh, has a long history of withholding information, even from the government. And one gets the feeling that the government and TEPCO are more or less shoulder to shoulder in this. They don't want to, to panic the public, but uh, th that's one thing, of course. Nobody wants the public to panic. But not to inform them is really unforgivable, I think. At this point in time, the first priority has got to be the protection of the people, especially the young generation, the, the kids and the pregnant women and nursing mothers and so on. Uh, after all, this is the future. Indeed. I want to squeeze in one last question for you. Uh, it, was, it was just a week ago we were talking about the possibility of a complete meltdown. Uh, has that threat passed? Is restoring power helping to uh, avert that disaster from occurring? Well, they haven't restored power to Unit 2. Uh, remember that Units 1, 2, and 3 are the only ones that really are in danger of a complete meltdown. The reason is that they were the ones that were operating when the earthquake struck. Units 4, 5, and 6 were already shut down. Uh, they were in a shutdown state. So although we have a big problem with the spent fuel bays uh, and the material going into the in right into the uh, atmosphere, the actual meltdown would take place in the core. And that meltdown, uh, it could still happen in unit number three. We hope not. But unit number three is the only unit that is fueled with plutonium. And that was only since September. Plutonium is known to be a much more active fissile material and possibly much more difficult to control. Uh, so there could be a reinitiation of the chain reaction due to something going on in the core that we don't understand. The fact that there was a sudden buildup of pressure in the core of the reactor, unexplained, is not encouraging. Not encouraging. Gordon Edwards, boy, did I enjoy talking to you. Thanks very much. Appreciate your thoughts on this tonight. You're very welcome.